So let's take a walk here and I'll uh, want to show you something. So as you can see, zone one is looking pretty good and pretty dark coming out of winter from that pole where the back of my car is. This way, it does have pre-emergent on it. This way doesn't, and I'm gonna show you why. decided they were going to put in a new hydrant. I'm glad about that because uh, in the event that my neighbors or my house, God forbid, would need a fire hydrant because they had a fire, uh, I want a good functioning fire hydrant and it's right on the corner of my house so no problems with there. Obviously a little bit of damage. You can see they just yesterday put the forms out for the concrete to fix the sidewalk and then the water company will be back. They're going to remove all this bulk take it down and then they're gonna dump I already talked to them they're just gonna supply the soil I'm gonna supply the seed so today we can finally put down the seed and take care of the things we need to take care of out on zone one of my property the water company was here this morning and they finished up doing what they needed to do as well as removing uh, some of the media after settling so that they could put down some soil and then I can go ahead and seed. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, and unfortunately it's really cold today. Yeah, I don't really feel like working outside, but um, it's got to get done for sure. So I, like most people, am not a big proponent of uh, spring seeding, but I do acknowledge that there are some reasons why you might want to, want to or have to complete some seeding in the spring. I do believe it's best to do it in fall because in spring there's just too many variables. There's just a man, many different reasons why not to do uh, spring seeding, but when you have something like this going on, you don't really have a choice. You can't leave it like this for the entirety of the season. As I said, this all stems from the water company replacing this hydrant, which I'm grateful for. And I've said that, um, but this is where the damage had occurred as well as down there in some other spots that you may uh, notice. The majority of the work was done here. You can see the sidewalk has been replaced. Where I'm currently standing as well as over here where these fixtures were, they had to dig down quite far. Underneath this is is a, a gravel substance. Wow, that is soft. <laughs> Look at that. I did talk to these guys, really nice, good guys. They, uh, per, they dug away probably a foot down of the uh, gravel media they put down and replaced it with just soil. As you can see how deep that was. When I stepped into it, I will rake this out and then we will come back and seed. There's a few spots where the track machine was in my yard that they provided me soil for. Sorry about the ambulance there. It's my prayer that wherever that ambulance is going, whoever they're taking care of, it's my hope that uh, God's will be done there. So this is gonna get feathered out and uh, take you back here and show you what I got. So some, some hand tools, that's another project over there. Two, thing, two bales of peat moss should be plenty for this project. Again, um, I'm just trying to get something in this area so I'm not looking at bare dirt all summer. And for it, I'm just gonna be throwing down some Jonathan Green Black Beauty Sun Mix. Uh, it's predominantly tall fescue, which is good. I have other seeds that I would prefer to use, but this is the best seed in my area that you can get that's readily available. And it's also available on uh, Yard Mastery's website. So uh, I used the Black Beauty Dense Shade Mix at my parents' house and had some great results, which we'll be doing an update on here uh, shortly. 
This seed is pretty good. I have a little bit higher standards for my lawn usually, but when I when you need to do something like this, it's rarely available. Um, the Jonathan Green's a good product. As you can see, I pounded this large one down so that it was flush with the soil, but unfortunately those ones over there, um, I'm just using a very small dead blow uh, hand sledge and uh, I can't get those to go down. So not a big deal if they're not going to go down, that kind of sucks, but I, I do believe with a heavier sledgehammer, uh, you should be able to get that to go down. So I'm going to have to grab a sledge and uh, try to knock those down further but uh, that's not a super huge concern right now Hey guys, I wanted to mention this from the studio. You see me tamping down the soil and usually I would advise against that because you want the soil structure to be as loose as possible so that when germination does occur, those roots can drive down easily through a loose soil. However, the water company really hooked me up with a lot of topsoil here. And because of that, one of the biggest issues you might deal with in a spring seeding is heavy rains of spring that cause runoff and soil to move and that's why I decided to pack it down because I want to alleviate the possibility of that happening as well as settling as much as I possibly could. So everything's leveled out and I do hope that it doesn't settle too much because there is, they did hook me up with a lot of soil here, but it's a lot of soil and I'm hoping it doesn't settle way too much. Now we'll lightly rake the seed in and uh, got to hurry on that because it's windy today and it's um, blowing around. Now it's time for my least favorite part, the peat moss. It's a messy process but it's worth it. Uh, it'll keep soil moisture, keep the seed from running off. Uh, likely I'm going to put a mat on that over there but these flatter spots are going to get the peat moss so let's get dirty. I always use peat moss over manure in my seeding projects because just like topsoil, you can't guarantee what you're bringing in with that bulk manure. You can't guarantee the fertilizer analysis of it, and you can't guarantee the amount of noxious or other crop weeds that you might be bringing in within that manure. The only caveat to that I will say is that since manure is more clumpy and bulky, it does have the ability to stay better during heavy rains. Today's conditions for seeding are not good, especially when you're putting out uh, something as light as peat moss. One wind gust and it blows it away. Oh, don't seed when it's windy out. It just, it's a mess. So this looks like it'll be enough to get that hillside covered. And now that I think about it, the pins are over at my parents' house. Um, so I'll call my dad. If I have to, I'll just stick a couple screwdrivers in the ground for now. Usually when you're peat mossing, you're gonna need to put some down where it washes out. So I will probably, it'll be a nice experiment. We'll skip, nah, I'm gonna peat moss that too. And blanket it, and blanket it. Yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna do both. So I need to, I need to go to my parents' house and pick up the pins to stake that. But it is so windy, uh, I don't want this to all blow away. So I'm gonna get the hose and I'm gonna lightly water just so the peat moss doesn't blow away. So we're going to use Tenacity, um, RGS, so we're doing like uh, 
six ounces a thousand of RGS on new seatings and then we're going to do the green pop which is right behind here um, so again green county green pop for the fertilizer requirement it is a 1621 2 that foss will get that seat jumping the RGS to get those roots driven down this is Almost empty. There might be six ounces in this. Obviously, it's not even a thousand square feet, but so that should be enough RGS. Yeah, I'm a little, little. Uh, this whole thing's been like I, I was not planning on doing this today, so uh, it kind of caught me off guard when the water company showed up. And it's like once they drop that dirt, it's kind of, kind of got to go, especially because it's going to rain tomorrow. The tenacity, or it's. Um, one teaspoon per two gallons of water. Obviously not gonna do that, so we'll probably go at the half teaspoon rate. We'll be applying that with the Strom sprayer, and that thing is freaking awesome. I did put six ounces of RGS in here. Technically day of seeding, you're supposed to do three ounces, but six ounces isn't gonna hurt anything. For the, for the green pop, calls for 12 ounces on a seating and that's per thousand square feet nowhere near a thousand so we'll probably cut that in half uh, and that'll you know get us around where we need to be so six ounces of RGS we'll do six ounces of green pop as well again if we were doing a thousand square feet it would be 12 ounces and then I did half a teaspoon of tenacity and that will all be mixed into a gallon of water or finished solution. Since it, we're working with such small areas, I'm not gonna be using the standard nozzles that I would usually use. This is a gallon and a half per minute rain jet. These are actually made to go on like the Kemlon guns you see professionals using. Now they're running a different one of these that's putting out you know, two, three, even four gallons a minute. This one is a gallon and a half a minute, and that's the, the lowest GPM they make in the Lesco tips. So I'll be using that to put the product out on the seeded areas, and this will be especially good today because with the amount of wind, a fine fan isn't going to, you're going to get a lot of drift. It's so windy, these larger droplets that this produces will get to the soil and won't be blown off target as much. Wound up with a little over gallon and a half of finished solution just make sure we evenly disperse it throughout the yard um, after i use this a little bit more maybe i'll do a video on this strom because it is an impressive backpack sprayer i will not be using that because i'll be using this tip you run that on the high setting so we're going to go ahead and bleed the line here Today, since it's windy, as you see, those larger droplets don't drift off of what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to keep it off the sidewalk, but you got to do what you got to do. These bigger droplets are definitely a plus because a fine, a fine spray mist would not uh, do so well today. Man, I really soaked that one down. Got a little bit overzealous there. I think a lot of you are in the same situation. Um, you don't plan on doing these projects, but spring comes up and you're like, oh crap, look at these bare spots. So that's what we're addressing. So I'm gonna water this in and Hope that the temperatures get warmer because it has been quite chilly anyway thanks for watching if you enjoyed this please like subscribe i really appreciate it uh, if you like this content it would mean a lot to me I've got a lot more the season's just beginning so i appreciate the time and uh it's a little rushed i admit but you gotta strike while the iron's hot right so we'll see you next time this is the pursuit of growth five percent Gold.
Anaconda, tall fescue. You have two types of, one type of perennial vine. 